Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Saxman. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm a, a senior developer advocate at Google, and uh, today I'm going to answer a few questions that we had uh, on Moderator about building Android apps for Google TV. Um, next week, we're going to be talking, uh, we have a track at uh, Google I.O. We're going to be covering a few, uh, few different topics. Uh, one is actually UI. Uh, one is uh, integrating media devices with Google TV. And one is on the second screen. Um, I'll specifically be giving the uh, second screen talk. And uh, so today, I'll, I'd like to cover a few of the questions we had on second screen applications. Uh, but I'd also like to cover a few of the other general questions that you had, because we had a, a few really good ones uh, via Google Moderator. And uh, we have some in Stack Overflow that uh, we'll talk about today as well. So uh, on Google Mo uh, Moderator, we had a really good question. Um, it, it actually ends up being a few questions wrapped into one. Uh, the question is, I want to send my Google or Facebook ID password to Google TV from my Android phone. And how can I connect or sync between devices? Uh, I'm saying that's kind of two questions in one, um, primarily because uh, you know managing managing IDs and passwords is really kind of one one separate to topic beyond um, actually syncing data between devices. Uh, so I'll, I'd like to cover that separately from actually the, the syncing. It's very fortuitous that uh, you know there's a few questions about um, syncing data between devices because, like I said, that's the talk I'm giving next week. But um, so I can maybe give you a little bit of a preview about uh, some of the content that I'm going to have. So in terms of uh, connecting or syncing between devices, uh, you, you actually have a number of different options. The, uh, the main option is, is really do it yourself. Uh, you can actually use the java.net libraries, which are available in the Android framework. And uh, these actually let you bring up a server socket on Google TV. Um, you, you instantiate a socket on your, your Android phone. And actually, you can just do raw socket communication between the two devices. Um, the easiest way to actually find the Google TV device on the home network, for example, is to use MDNS. Uh, Google TV devices actually broadcast um, an MDNS service called Anymote on the uh, local network. So, so if you use an MDNS library, you can scan the network, find the IP address of a Google TV device in the living room or in the, uh, the user's home network. Uh, once you have the IP address, you can actually open up the socket connection and do the communication yourself. Um, we found actually that uh, you know, kind of building up that type of uh, communication, like this, the SOC communication, there's there's a lot of stuff that's kind of repeated, uh, or a lot of apps would actually share. So we uh, we're, we're actually looking to kind of you know put together a library that developers can use to, to help automate some of that. Um, so your second option is is to use a library that um, that we'll be uh, discussing in a little more detail at, at Google I/O. Your third option for sharing data between two devices, or a Google TV device and a handheld device, is actually using the Anymote library. Um, the Anymote library is a little bit different from just raw data communication, though. It's actually more of a remote control library um, that allows um, handheld devices to send events, like key events and mouse events, uh, from a handheld device to the TV. And the interesting thing about Anymote is that actually the, the TV or whatever apps in the foreground on the TV actually receives those events. So you can actually um, use a, a handheld device as a as a uh, input device to send key and mouse events. Uh, so that actually doesn't really fit into the question. So what I'd I'd say here is that uh, for for syncing data, just raw data, either you know look at the uh, opening up so socket connections. Uh, you can use the MDNS to discover the devices on the network, and um, or you know maybe maybe wait a, a few days or a week and uh, see what we have for the uh, the the library for sharing data. Um, in terms of actually uh, I IDs and passwords and how you want to manage IDs and passwords on devices, um, the short answer is, is you probably don't. Um, you probably want to rely on uh, something like the Android Account Manager to manage your uh, Google accounts. Because when a, a user actually sets up the device, uh, they, they actually share their, um, they actually sets up an Android device, they enter their username and password. Um, and then that, uh, those credentials are actually used to get access to uh, Google services. Uh, I, I don't exactly remember the details, um, but it, it might be possible to actually get a, uh, some kind of authentic authentication token out from the device or from the account manager that you can share with uh, Google TV. Um, or you can actually rely on Google TV itself to, um, to actually have the credentials. And the, uh, it also has an account manager, so you can rely on that as well. Uh, like any Android device, the user actually enters their, their credentials when they set up the device. Uh, as far as Facebook is concerned, um, I'm not too familiar with how their APIs work. Um, what I have seen on some applications is that it actually opens up a web interface when the user authenticates to the, the Facebook, um, Facebook service. And uh, I mean, generally, how this type of authentication works is the, 
the application developer doesn't have access to the credentials, so, um, but they will have access to some kind of token that they can um, use for authentication to the service. So it, likewise, in that situation, if you do get a token back from, from their APIs, you can actually send it to the Google TV device using uh, raw socket connections. So let's see, another question we have. So this is actually a very popular question, just not, not only a moderator, but um, we get this question a lot about uh, AnyMote and developing second screen apps and what, what libraries are available. Uh, like I said, we're, we're actually going to release more libraries uh, around Google I.O. or next week, so, so stay tuned for that. Um, what we have right now, however, we have quite a few uh, libraries available. We have the, the AnyMote library, like I mentioned earlier, that's a, a protocol for actually uh, sending key events and mouse events from a handheld device to, the, to Google TV. Um, and it, it actually is a very sophisticated library because it actually secures all the communication. And the reason you want to do that is uh, secure, secure the communication is that if you're entering key codes um, in a handheld device uh, or entering uh, using the handheld device as a key, keyboard or using the key, key input, um, the user could be entering things like passwords and logins. You don't want to send that, necessarily send that clear text to the, uh, to the TV. So, um, so the library actually secure, secures the, the uh, data interchange so that it uh, can't be snipped on a local network. Uh, so the AnyMote protocol, the AnyMote library is actually available um, in uh, Java for Android devices or for Java applications or Android applications. Um, we, we also very recently released a C++ version. Uh, the C++ version, um, we didn't provide these wrappers, but um, could be used for, for iOS devices as well. So uh, if you are building an iOS application and you want that to integrate with Google TV, uh, you can look into that as an option as well. Um, we also have uh, the, the Android remote control for Google TV. Uh, we, we open source that. Uh, and uh, so if you want to build a, a remote control application, uh, much like the uh, the Google TV uh, remote for Android, uh, you, you can actually start there as well. Uh, also, very recently, uh, we released a library called the the AnyMote library um, to, to be slightly differentiated from the the AnyMote protocol library that we've released pre previously. Uh, the AnyMote library is actually a uh, an Android library that you can uh, import into a Android project in Eclipse and use it from there. Um, it actually simplifies the, the communication with AnyMote, uh, actually the pairing discovery and communication with AnyMote um, quite a bit. So, um, so if you are thinking about building an application, you might want to you know, look into this AnyMote library as well. Um, I've implemented an app using this library. Uh, it's you know, a matter of 100 to 200 lines of code. If you implemented you know, the Android remote control, uh, or the Google TV remote control for Android. If you take a look at that code, it's quite a bit more sophisticated. Um, there's a lot more code that was pushed up to the client side there. Uh, whatever code we could abstract and put in this Android library, we did. So, uh, so those are a few of the options. Um, you know, we're probably going to, like I said, talk about some more stuff at Google I/O about second screen applications and and um, and code that's available. So the, my my sh shameless uh, shameless pitch right now is that uh, if you're really curious about second screen applications and building them, uh, be sure to check out our talk at I.O. Um, so I'm going to move on. So we get a lot of questions about um, so finding out what TV show or movie a Google TV user is watching. Um, of course, developers are really, a lot of developers are really interested in this because then you can do things like tailored ads. Um, you can you know, tie into social streams and actually um, synchronize uh, the, the viewing experience with kind of a, a data feed or social stream. Um, unfortunately, we don't support that presently on Google TV. Um, and the issue is, is A, it's, it's actually a secure video path. Um, so we can't just expose the secure video path to, to applications for them to analyze it themselves. Um, the other issue is that, um, so even though, so the, the Google TV remote controls are universal remotes, uh, the user actually uses that to replace you know, any other remote that they have in their living room. And the way that works is the Google TV devices presently have um, um, infrared blasters. So when you configure a Google TV device, you say what, what other AV devices and set-top boxes you have in your living room. Um, and then it can be configured to control those applications through the, the Google TV remote control. Um, the issue is, though, so if a user uses the, the Google TV remote control, we know, you know essentially what, the, what they've changed their channel to. Um, however, there's no guarantee that the user used the remote control. Um, they could you know, use their set-top box remote control, 
Um, they could use any other, you know, go to the TV and change the channel directly. Uh, there's a number of different things they can do, and, and we're, we don't have that information necessarily. So we, we don't presently have an API for actually exposing what channel the uh, user is currently watching. But uh, we get this as a, uh, it's a pretty common request we get from developers. So we are definitely investigating other you know, ways that we could potentially solve this problem. Uh, another very, very common question we get um, is about embedding live TV in applications. Um, so so a lot, what a lot of developers want to do is they, um, in addition to actually synchronizing, let's say, um, information and live TV, uh, they want to put that in, in a single interface on the TV. So for example, you can be watching a sporting event, and maybe on the right-hand side, you can actually see a live statistics. Um, and letting, embedding live TV in an application is, is something that we, we curr currently don't support. Uh, we, we absolutely get this request a lot. Uh, we think it's a very, very valid use case. Um, and we are absolutely looking at ways to kind of solve that problem as well. Um, we, we don't have anything to announce in the, in the very near term. But uh, like I said, uh, along with um, kind of knowing what the user is watching, um, embedding live TV is something that we're definitely uh, listening to developers on. So uh, we, we have another uh, question about Anymote. Um, this is from somebody that's actually very, very a developer that's very familiar with Anymote. And the question is, uh, will Anymote support international languages? Uh, for upcoming deployments in other countries. So um, we, we have made announcements that Google TV is actually coming to other countries and uh, sometime this year. So you know, stay tuned on you know, what countries and when. Um, so we are looking into actually adding that support to Anymote right now. Uh, we, we think we have a, a potential solution. Um, I'd say stay tuned on that. Uh, it's something that you know, we're, we, we have kind of a solution in hand. It's just a matter of getting it, uh, getting it in the hands of developers. So uh, when, and w when and how, um, unfortunately, we can't say yet. Uh, we're, but uh, that is something that we'd be able to hopefully be able to launch pretty soon. Um, and I'm going to go over to Stack Overflow real quick, because it, I was looking at the questions. Uh, I mean, I look at the questions in Stack Overflow quite, quite regularly. And uh, it looks like recently we got a lot of questions on the Google TV emulator. Um, and this potentially is related to the fact that, um, you know, Developers in other countries are actually using uh, the emulator for development, um, or even domestically as well. So, um, one question is: is uh, you know what are the possibilities with the Google TV emulator, um, primarily around live TV? Um, so, Google TV, the Google TV emulator actually um, supports the the channel chaining channel uh, listing and channel changing APIs uh, that the real device supports. And, uh, but it, it doesn't obviously have access to actually real live TV content. Uh, so what will happen if you, when you set up the emulator, you enter a, a US postal code right now. Um, the emulator will, um, that you, once you give it the postal code, you actually configure uh, what content provider you have or broadcast um, live TV provider. And then actually the, the channel lineup will be populated in, in the channel listing provider. Um, once you get, the, so when you query the channel listing provider, you can get a channel changing intent, and you can actually fire off that intent to change the channel. Uh, what happens on the emulator, though, is that you're, you're giving a, a test screen, and it'll show you the, the call sign for the channel, and it'll show you the, uh, the, the number. So you obviously you, you don't have access to actually the live content, uh, but we do emulate live content in the emulator. So uh, one other question we have. Um, this is actually a fairly common question as well about using any mode in the emulator. Um, we, we actually don't support any, any mode right now in the emulator. Uh, and the issue is, is how we actually bridge, um, bridge the network between the emulator and the, the platform. Um, we, we are, this is something else we're looking into. Um, so obviously, I'm covering all the, uh, the questions that we get a lot. So, so if I keep saying that we're, we're looking into it, it's that you know, these are the questions that are in the top of our queue. So um, let me see, what other, one other question here. Um, so actually, I'm going to say that's just about it. Um, we did have one more question in moderator about um, so Google TV being updated to ICS um, and how long until you know Google TV is updated, updated to the next release. Um, this is something I mean we, we we don't necessarily announce like you know future releases, um, but we we are definitely looking into. Um, into actually updating it to a future release, uh, whether that's going to be ICS or the uh, release after that, we, we cannot say. Um, but it is something that uh, hopefully developers and users can see um, in the not too distant future. So 
And uh, so I think that's just about it for the questions. Uh, we started a little bit late, but um, I'm going to uh, say that I think I covered kind of the main questions that we had uh, via moderator and, uh, and Stack Overflow. Um, again, so next week, uh, the Google TV I.O. sessions are on Thursday. Uh, I think they're starting at 9 AM um, and going through the morning. So uh, we have one, um, Christian Kurtzka is going to give a talk on media devices. Um, uh, Osama Olami is going to give a talk on uh, user, user experience. And uh, the talk that I'll be giving is going to be on uh, building second screen apps that integrate with Google TV. Uh, definitely hope to see you there. And um, if you have any questions, so feel free to uh, keep posting them on Stack Overflow. Um, I'm guessing this moderator queue will be open for a little while, so I can definitely respond there as well. And uh, if you can make it to I.O., I'd definitely like to meet up with you there.